I, I will now give the floor to uh, Mr. Forbes, and we thought it would be uh, interesting to have an American view, to, to share our experience here in Europe with somebody who comes from the, the other side of, of the Atlantic and see how, how we can learn from the experience there of a large, very large association that is relying on lots of uh, volunteers. So you've got the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here to talk to you t about a subject <coughs> close to my heart, older volunteers. <laughs> I can testify to the personal rewards of offering as one services, as I'm a volunteer myself, just like every other member of AARP's Board of Directors. I want to start by thanking the European Commission for inviting AARP uh, to join this conference, with particular thanks to John McDonald for all his good work. AARP has had the opportunity to partner with the European Commission on several events over the past several years, and it's great to be here today and part of this conversation. We are pleased to be here to share and learn about best practices and experiences related to volunteering. The title of this session is Volunteering in the Forthcoming European Years, and given the next year, given that next year is the 2012 year of active aging and intergenerational solidarity, I will speak about AARP's activity engaging older volunteers and give a little background on the AARP story. AARP is the largest membership organization in the United States with millions of members and offices in every state, Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. It is a nonprofit organization dedicated to addressing the needs and interests of persons age 50 and older. Volunteers have always been, been the heart and soul of AARP. Our national officers, our state presidents, and thousands of our program leaders and legislative advocates are all unpaid volunteers. AARP's founder, Dr. Dr. Ethel Percy Andrus, lived by the motto, to serve, not to be served. Words that guide our work more than 50 years later. When she retired as the first woman high school teacher, a principal in California, uh, Dr. Andrus became deeply disturbed by the plight of many retired teachers, and she swore, and she was moved by one in particular. Hearing that a former teacher needed help, Dr. Andrus investigated and found the woman, uh, the woman living in a chicken coop all she could afford on her $40 a month pension after paying medical expenses. That did it. Dr. Andrus launched a campaign to get health insurance for retired teachers. Then in 1958, at the age of 73, she expanded her work and formed AARP which now has more than 37 million members. We advocate for seniors on affordable health care, financial security, livable communities, and we are an information resource through AARP, the magazine, and Viva, our bilingual magazine, and also with two TV shows, radio programming, a website, and social media. Underlying everything is a commitment to service. Dr. Andrus believed that older Americans had much, much to contribute in ability, in experience, and in desire to advance the public good, and likewise, that society had much to gain from its older citizens. Dr. Andrus was part of a strong tradition of volunteering and service in the United States. Families, neighbors, and coworkers support one another in times of need. An unprecedented number of Americans, however, also work to help strangers, and today, both kinds of service are stronger than ever. Many nonprofit organizations engage volunteers in service, often to help youth get a good education, assist with economic needs, improve the environment, support health and aging services, and assist with disaster preparedness relief. Presidential leadership has been critical in strengthening volunteerism in America. Fifty years ago, President Kennedy challenged Americans to serve with his famous quote, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Kennedy went on to initiate the Peace Corps program. Successive pre uh, presidents continued and expanded the legacy, creating more programs to build up volunteerism in the United States. Upon taking office, President Barack Obama further strengthened the nation's commitment to national organized service by signing the Edward M. Kennedy Service America, uh, Serve America Act, 
which increases volunteer opportunities and seeks to identify and expand volunteer opportunities and programs with proven results. President Obama continues to set a powerful example for family volunteering as he volunteers several times each year with his own family at schools, food pantries, and other sites needing help. Even with this strong history, today is a new day for volunteering in the United States. The last decade has embedded it even more deeply into the American psyche. First, service is on our calendar. We now have two national days of service, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service and September 11th Day of Service and Remembrance. These offer regular invisible chances for families to help others on a possible shared day off. Further, many families are beginning to celebrate Veterans Day by engaging in service with and for veterans. There's also National Volunteer Week in April, which includes a youth service challenge and the fourth Sunday, a Saturday in October is Make a Difference Day. Second, service is fully integrated into our system of education through student service learning. Through these programs, students are asked to engage in service projects with their teachers and classmates and also help others in the community outside of school hours on their own or with family. These programs begin as early as kindergarten and run through high school, sometimes as a graduation requirement. Third, there has been a boom of volunteering in the workplace. Many employers find they are more likely to attract and retain talented staff if they include effective service opportunities as part of the workplace environment. Wealthy or not, young or old, single or married, across all cultural and ethnic groups, Americans are stepping forward to make things better for individuals and communities. A government survey capturing a broad definition of service revealed that 58% of Americans helped a neighbor at least once a month in 2009. Even people facing challenges of their own are helping, often saying that they know how <coughs> tough it is to have even less. Yet, while volunteerism is expanding, it hasn't yet grown to full capacity and potential. Tens of millions of Americans want to volunteer more than they do today, and of course, millions of families need more help. The volunteer landscape is changing, fueled in part by a rapid increase in the number of older people who are eager to volunteer. The baby boomer generation is coming into their retirement years and they are changing the face of volunteerism. The boomers have the benefit of greater longevity, better health, and new connections arising from technology. <coughs> Age is becoming less of a predictor of how they live their lives. Today's 50 plus Americans are very interested in volunteering. Their desire to give back is as strong or maybe even stronger than that of any other generation. But they want to do it their own way. They have time constraints that many of our elders haven't had and they present a keen interest in both creating and directing their own efforts. In other words, they want to volunteer on their own time and on their own terms. Many interested volunteers don't know how to find their best role, and at the same time, volunteer organizations sometimes lack the capacity to fully engage all those who want to help more. One of the big hindrances to volunteering cited by those age 45, no one ever asked them. Trying to adapt to older volunteers' wants and needs is well worth the effort. Volunteers over age 50 remain one of our nation's best kept secrets. Studies have found repeatedly that older volunteers offer a healthy work <coughs> ethic, a low turnover rate, wide interests, and, and demonstrate performance stability in volunteer activities. Sure. We'll skip over to uh, uh, slide 12. In direct response to the growing desire for more flexible service options, AARP developed Create the Good Network to fit the new world of volunteering and a new breed of volunteers. The website, createthegood.org, 
is an online destination where people can connect to opportunities to serve their communities. People can find opportunities to make a difference in five minutes, five hours, or five days. You can visit these sites to find out how-to guides for service projects. You can also search for volunteer opportunities in your own neighborhood or post volunteer opportunities of your own so that you can tap into our rapidly growing create the good community of people who want to help others. An example of our volunteer activities is the Experience Corps, which engages older adult tutors to improve kindergarten to third grade student literacy. Experience Corps is joining forces with AARP. Experience Corps is currently serving 20,000 students in disadvantaged schools. With the AARP integration, we are only on a path to reach 50,000, we are on a path to reach 50 to 100,000 students in five years, thereby becoming the largest tutoring program in the country for young children. For many of us, part of the journey of living life to its fullest is the desire to leave a legacy, to make certain we have marked our passage through life by making the world a better place. Helping others, being of service, especially to those who have had fewer opportunities or whose circumstances placed them in need is something each of us can do. So each of us has something to contribute. Each of us can ease the way for someone else. And thank you so much for letting me speak today about such an important subject. I'd like to uh, mention that we have our AARP International Journal on the back tables if anyone would like to pick up an available copy. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. Thank you.